So through a few configurations of Webpack and the inclusion of the Webpack development server, it will enable us to create a hot refresh, which basically means that anytime we change something in our code, automatically our code will compile or, or prepare itself and then remove that need for us to refresh and the browser and reconfigure our server so we'll automatically refresh so our browser will automatically give us the content that was updated which will save us a lot of time so let's jump right into it so module.express is not a es6 standard it is actually a standard that it comes out of common js if you've heard of that package which was endorsed by Node.js. We're going to see how you do this in ES6 in a later video, but generally speaking, I just want you to know what this is when you see it. What this is basically says is whenever you're loading in external files, such as this case where we're loading up our Webpack, or Webpack is loading this file to gain access to its configurations, it looks for or it only has access to whatever was exported. Anything that is placed up above here or below that's not exported, you will just not, it won't have access to. So literally all this is, it basically says is anything that's here is globally or publicly available to anyone that loads this file. Now there's a few different configurations that we want to put in here. And the first is our entry point. And our entry point is basically the starting file for our client-side JavaScript application that we want to package up for Webpack. And in this case, where it's going to be inside of our source, and just so it's very clear, I'm going to call it client.js, and we'll create that file in a moment. And we also want to give a direction of the output itself, so we know where our starting point is. And this file might load up a few different files, which it will throughout this chapter as well, and in general throughout our course. And we want to set it and say, okay, what path do we want to put it in? In this case, just to keep things simple, I'm going to put it into our public folder. And we're going to also drop in a lot of other things into that public folder. And I'm going to set the file name that well, our final file name will be called. And I'll just call it app.js. So that's going to be our application. Or you know what, let's keep it close to the index file. Let's call it index.js. Okay? So now that we've said that, that is the basics. There's a lot of other things that we probably want to configure and set. But even before that, let's just make sure that, make sure, and I kind of like in the magic of internet, I went ahead and I kind of like already set it while you weren't noticing. Um, oh, that's not that. Let me find the right folder. Here we go. So, so basically what I did is I grabbed from our starter file our public while you didn't notice. So now we have all of our basic HTML files. So let's go ahead and also create that script file that client that script so I'm just gonna go jump into my terminal for a second and I'm gonna ask to touch our dot source uh, client.js so we'll have that file and let's just put something very simple inside there so I'm just gonna go into that file in my editor and I'm just gonna do a console.log and we're gonna log in um, hello from webpack and let me save this. Now, even before we're done with this, now that we have what's our HTML file, just go into that HTML file, scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, and make sure that if you don't have it already, make sure to add your index.js. I already did that before because I was replacing all the JavaScript, so it's expecting to find an index.js in it. Perfect. So now that it has all that configured, let's go ahead and configure our server. To configure our server, I'm going to do it exactly in the same place inside of my webpack config, and I'm going to continue and set also the dev server configurations. And the dev server configurations, we're going to set three different configurations. The first one is what folder is our base folder, our content folder. And in this case, you already know what it is. So our base folder is going to be basically the public folder. That's going to be our root directory or our web root. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set a po uh, port. And I'm going to set the port to be 3000, but you really could set it to any number that is not being used currently by your system. Usually 3000 is not used. And I want to do one more thing before we wrap it up is I want to go and I'm going to set inline true. Now by setting this variable, it's going to make sure that our server will refresh and recompile anytime we change something in our files and also refresh our browser crazy cool stuff so let's go ahead and save that and to be able to run our server and check it out now that we have our webpack configured and our webpack dev server also installed both of them it's a bit of a pain if you wanted to actually access them directly from terminal you would have to type their um, node js modules and you'd have to look for webpack 
and dev and server and then dot bin probably or bin and then uh, webpack dev server or so on and so forth and so forth but it's not really worth it because what you want to do is you want and the easiest way to work around with things is by, by the way don't do it until the installation is complete because while the installation is going on your webpack will refresh so make sure that you go into the file and it's fresh and you see that your two installations are created now notice by default in our script we have your attest we don't need that so we could delete it and instead of that we're going to put our own script and the, our own script that we want to put in is incredibly simple we're going to type your start and the value is just going to be web dev server now because this app this is living within it's living within the server it's living within node.js it's living within all these access it has access to all the node modules that are installed and in this case it gives me access I don't have to type all these long paths I could just literally just create these short scripts commands once I have the short script command, that's really all I need to to be able to trigger it because it's called start. I'm just going to type your npm start. And it's literally going to go there and look at the configurations. It's going to compile the files. If everything worked okay, that's it. Our server is running. And if now I go into my browser, and by the way, this is the this is the, the the file that we're working with and you can get it at the source files inside of this file it's included in our links to this chapter but if we open up a new and go into localhost and we go into the path 3000 not 3001 you'll see that our server is running not only that if I go here and I click in to inspect my element we'll see inside of our console that we have your hello from webpack moreover than that if we go and we make any changes inside of webpack so if I go into my client and I say hello from webpack 2.0 and I go ahead and save it all that's all I had to do if I go back into my browser it's going to refresh and re-render and you can see that uh, there was some sort of a interruption but you were still getting hello from webpack 2.0 and literally that's all we had to do because every time that we save we go back it's gonna locate it and it's gonna refresh it so that's it that is the basics basics of how to get set up and running with webpack with hot refreshes now obviously this is going to become incredibly useful throughout this title because we won't have to click refresh each time we make some changes in this lecture we learned how to create a hot refresh using the webpack development server in the next lecture we'll continue down this path and learn how to integrate ES6 or ES2016 already today with the help of Babel.